Hello, I'm Valerie Wolford, Communications Manager for the City of Green, and this is Roundabout Green, a show that offers insight, shares ideas, and serves to educate residents in Green on a variety of topics. Today, my guest is Barberton Municipal Court Judge Todd McKenney. Judge McKenney runs the Barberton Drug Court and is here to share his expertise and information about the Drug Court program. Welcome, Judge McKinney. It's good to be here. Well, it's great that you're here, and I'm so glad that we get to do this topic about the drug court program. But one of the things people aren't aware of in Green is uh, why Barberton Municipal Court and what are you doing here in Green? So um, I know we have a contract with the Barberton Court, so share a little bit what the Barberton Court does. And people who've had speeding tickets and had to go to court locally know that the court is in Barberton on the shores of Lake Anna. So oh, well, I, I can contest I have not had one. Well, and that's good, <laughs> or maybe you paid the waiver, but uh, the, uh, the local court for misdemeanors and traffic offenses in the southern part of Summit County is in Barberton. So that's green in New Franklin and Coventry and runs up through Barberton and Norton into Copley. Um, there are three districts in the county, so Akron has its own municipal court, Stowe has its own municipal court, and all those regions are covered. So if you're in Green, you're in Barberton for misdemeanors and traffic offenses. And the drug court, misdemeanor drug court, and that's why it's in Barberton, and that's why we're talking to Green residents about what we do there. Awesome. Well, I know we've got to know each other because we're both on the drug task force here in Green, and we'll talk a little bit more about the drug task force later. But um, so tell me, you know, the drug court is an important part of even the process of getting um, people kind of uh, sober. So tell me what it is, kind of big picture, what is the drug court and what does it do? The drug court is really our local anchor for responding to the drug crisis. And um, like you said, we're on the task force together, but we need some place where we can begin to deal with the criminal charges that have been filed. So we're finding people who um, have a misdemeanor offense, they're on probation, they're getting drug charges, they're actively engaged in addiction. Drug court provides an intensive level of supervision for those who want to have the opportunity to have the charges dismissed and their records sealed to put their lives back together. And it's a great program that harnesses kind of all of our local resources in one place. So it's in lieu of conviction of a crime. That's right, and that's actually okay. the technical term. So instead of uh, uh, having these charges on your record, uh, you can, if you're successful, you can have them dismissed, your record sealed, and um, they don't show up except to a very select group of law enforcement. Awesome. Well, that's, it sounds like a great program, and I know it is, and you guys are doing great things. Just yeah. a lot of people aren't aware of it. And um, So wait, who would qualify for the drug program? So it's uh, going to be people who either have misdemeanor convictions for, for drugs or, or something that comes from drugs. So it could be a theft charge if you're stealing to support your habit and you took something from Target and we identify that drugs are the, the leading culprit leading to that, then um, you may enter the drug court. It's really about intensive supervision. And the way I look at it is what we're trying to do is we're trying to help you build your life back. What we know about people who are actively engaged in addiction is they burn bridges at home and with friends and with employers. And once the realization comes that I want to get better, it becomes this piece of not just working on your sobriety, but building your whole life back together. And we find that an intensive 18-month period of time where we do that and we put all our resources together at it can be really successful. Awesome. Well, tell, tell us there's multiple steps. Yep. You said it's 18 months. That's, that's a commitment. And, right. But I think it's better than jail time or having a, a, a record. So tell us the process. Sure. So every morning, um, you can imagine in the court, we're seeing 50, 100, 150 people every day. We're looking at all those case files and we're approaching certain people and saying, if you've been charged with, with uh, drug paraphernalia and, and, and other drug charges, would you consider drug court? You can, you can participate in this. It's a, it's a serious commitment. It's um, going to be a, a, a big investment of time, but the benefit uh, are, are going to be um, dealing with the charges, but also getting your life back together. So that's the way we approach people to, to persuade them to want to do it. If they do that, then they, they come into an orientation program. They're going to sit in on a drug court. They're going to get a picture of it. They're going to learn from the other participants in the drug court who are further along than them. Right. We've, we've been at it for two years, and so, um, so what we see is then we go from the orientation, we get a treatment plan, and so we're talking about them. Firstly, it, it's weekly meetings, and then once you, once you progress through the different phases, you may go to every two weeks, and then to every month, and then eventually you're going to graduate uh, sometime about the 18-month stage. Now, sure. Right, so they're, they're going to treatment, yep. and then they're doing other things. I know like sometimes you help them get GEDs. Yep. Um, help them with job career readiness. I mean, there's lots of different programs. I mean, it sounds more like a social program than a court. 
Well, it is. And, and, you know, my goal is, and currently everyone in our drug court right now has their driver's license, and it has been easy, but it's because I've been just, every time they come in, I'm talking to them about how do you go deal with this license forfeiture and this suspension, which is, is something we do with everybody who comes into the court. We, we are really trying to talk to people about if you can be a safe, valid driver and get insurance and be on the roads, um, then um, if, if you qualify for that, we want to talk to you about how to do it. That's one of the things. So it's going to be transportation, housing, and employment. And it makes sense, because if you don't have the basics covered, it, it's hard to get yourself well. So um, it's a wonderful program. I've heard a lot. So how many people have successfully? You've been doing it two years. Been doing it two years. That means we were a brand new court two years ago, so we're just starting to have graduation. So right now, wow. people are graduating monthly. And it's, um, it's an emotional time. I think five people have graduated. I've got another one set in two weeks for a graduation. Uh, the, the woman who graduated in uh, September, she was there with her 13-year-old son, an eighth wow. grader. And um, I, I was thinking, you know, uh, what's it like for the 13-year-old for the to watch his mom graduate from drug court? And he's, you know, he's, he's 13, you know, so he was right. kind of, you know, not happy about being there, but at the same time, just shy about it. Later learned he's a straight-A student. But what the mom said was, when she was 11, he's the one who found her overdosed uh. and almost died. And so she, he lived with her through the period of, of active addiction. And what we know is, and what we're trying to do a better job with, is the fact of the, of the effect on family members. Right. How, how traumatic for an 11-year-old to find, and what she said was, and this breaks your heart, she said, I love the drugs more than him. And when people are in an active addiction, um, that can be true. Well, and heroin, as you and I know from what we've learned yeah. through being on the drug task force, it, it truly it changes just how you're... you're you're so addicted to it that it controls your life and, it, and you become a slave to it and it's and a horrible, horrible illness. And, and your natural affections are, over, are overridden, you right. know, and, and you'll do anything for the drugs. But she wanted him there to see and she said, I can show you now that I really do love you more than the drugs. And she went through this, this 18 month period where she said, I, was, I wasn't always happy here, I didn't always like you people, but I'm grateful for everything that I did. I've got my life back. And she did. And she didn't lose her son in the process. She didn't which lose happens, her son. That's right. right. Which happens. And, yeah. Well, that's such an inspirational story, but I think that kind of segues right to what I wanted to talk about. So, the Drug Task Force, let's kind of talk about that uh, a little bit, um, started not that long ago. It was last uh, April, and you've been involved for this past year. And we thank you for that, as um, for being a part of that. And one of the things we've been doing is educating, and we have our next education program on November 13th. And um, you're going to be at that, correct? I will, yes. So if anyone wants to learn more, they can come and talk to you privately there, yeah. or and I don't think we have you to speak there, but certainly if somebody has any questions, um, you can stand up and, and add in if they have those questions. But the program is really simple. What we're doing first is having our sheriff's deputy and a fire medic speak and explain what they're seeing here in green, that this is happening in green, and um, what the drug task force is doing to help prevent it and what the, the strategies we're taking. But then also after that education program, we're going to have a free Narcan clinic. And um, as you and I know, you know, Narcan is the drug that, re it's the anecdote that reverses an overdose and is highly uh, effective and, and saves lives. So we're giving out free kits as well. So I know you'll be there, I'll be there, and I hope our audience um, comes as well because it is an informative program, even though difficult sometimes to talk about. I want to leave people with, with a sense of hope, uh, and that's what we always try and do um, with all of our programs and, and, the, and the court as well because um, the, the, the tension for this are our parents who want to help their children get into treatment, our, our um, grandparents who care about their kids, and, and there really is hope that it can be better. It's going to be a struggle. Right. And that's why on the task force, we try and throw everything at it. It's, it's prevention and education and treatment and law enforcement's part. And we look at it as a coordinated strategy to beat back something that is really hard, but that people can get better from. And that's what we're going to keep working at doing. Right. I think you said it best. So we're going to leave it there. But thank you so much for coming. Good to be here. 
Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. You know, we try to make these programs short and sweet so that everyone gets the information in a short amount of time and without taking up too much of your time. So thank you so much for listening. If you need more information, you can contact uh, the Barberton Drug Court program and we do have the numbers um, for you at the end of the program. So thank you so much. I'm Valerie Wolfer, Communications Manager for the City of Green.